You know, the, the big sell off days like Friday leave people wondering and, and big drops in bond yields whether, you know, we're still in a bear market that we got caught up in at the end of last year. You've pushed back against this thesis. What are the recent signals in the market telling you? Um, well, I think that Friday is really showing how weak conviction is right now because as soon as we get data that highlights uh, weakness, we see these big market sell offs. And I, I, I think when people say markets are bullish to the position, I don't think that's the case. And so the real decision people have to make is is this a V shaped year like 2009 or 95 that people are talking about or a bear market? I think the evidence is showing this is looking like a bull market year and you have to buy the pullback. What's the evidence? Uh, well, I'd, I'd say one is market history. So, like, we had a V-shaped move in three months, um, over 20%. That's only happened 11 times since World War II. 11 out of the 12 times, you have further follow-through. Six and nine months later, average is 10%. This is saying it's a 20% year. I know the yield curve's inverted, but the front end is like chicken little. It has inverted as early as four years before a recession. The real curve to watch is the 10-year, 30-year. And that's been steepening. So, you know, it might be too early for people to getting to get neutral. And then, you know, I think there, we did a report last week show that there's a lot of indicators show we're mid-cycle in the U.S. You know, whether it's employment to population ratio, which is more like early 80s, not late cycle. Most people say we're late cycle. That's how the market's positioned, yes. And our clients universally feel that way. I think it's contrarian to say we're mid-cycle. But if you look at employment to population, usually it peaks at 64%. That's 10 million more jobs or about 300,000 a year for three more years. I don't know, Mike. It feels like right now you have to have a good feel for the bond market to know what stocks are doing next. We get yields ticking up and yeah. green light for a rally. Right now, that is the beacon uh, for the stock. But I don't know if that's going to necessarily last. I mean, it seemed as if before you had bond yields come down to these fresh lows late last week, the stock market was fine with the idea that the 10-year was contained, you know, below 2.6 or something like that. So, yeah, I don't think you want to see a furious rally in treasuries that, that drives yields that much lower uh, just because of, I think, it kind of it pricks at these sensitivities that we are late cycle and that the bond market is, is sending us this message. So what I do find interesting is the parts of the stock market that have been supporting things, let's say, in the last month, which is very large cap growth. Defensive sectors like utilities and real estate, um, banks are bouncing today, but they've been tremendous underperformers. So it's almost the stock market's way of kind of staying supported when we do have a lot of these doubts about the cycle. So I do, I would prepare. I, I do think that even if we have a V-shaped year, there's going to be little rotations within it in terms of what sectors seem to be leading or lagging. What sectors? Tom, are you in? Um, well, if you use 95 or 09 as templates, you really want to be in growth cyclical value, cyclical growth, those are the kind of things that are outperforming. So, you know, I think that's how we want to be positioned for clients. The one 20% V bottom that didn't work, was that after 9-11? Uh, the only exception was 1987. Okay. So you had a, a, re a roaring start to the year, and then you had, a, you know, obviously massive right. crash, but you still ended up for the year. But otherwise... You know, history says this is a V-shaped year, no retest. Those employment numbers you're using in terms of, uh, yeah. you feel like they're still accurate given the changing sort of yeah. reflection of employment in America? So many more people perhaps on disability, a lot more part-time workers. Correct. I'm just curious. Yeah, there's structural factors. So one is if you use employment to population ratio, the Phillips curve's not broken. So the R squared's still 85%. It's broken on the unemployment rate. Um, the reason it's diverged is exactly what you said, that the participation rate of 25 to 50-year-olds collapsed. It's actually turning up, but, you know, long-term disability is about one and a half points of that. Um, felonies are one and a half points of that. So there's three percentage points of participation hit just because of two factors. But more 60-year-old plus are working, so it's actually pulling up participation rates. I still think it's 63% will mark the top of this labor cycle. Hence, back to your mid-cycle call. Yes, that would be three years of further growth, yes. If the Phillips curve's working, then the Fed's hiking again this year? Well, I think December was a mistake because the data has shown it, and the curve would not be inverted if we didn't hike. Um, I think we should treat it as the Fed's done until the data strengthens, and then we might be getting another tightening cycle. That's what the 1030 is saying, but it's two years out. I mean, we're getting recession signals flashing all over the place. How about the fact that globally, the amount of negative yields right now is the highest level we've seen in years and yeah. not moving in a direction that would signal growth. Yeah, I mean, one, clearly the market's concerned about it. It's, you know, it's part of the, the dialogue. I think what people forget is Germany's PMI 
is probably part inventory correction, but also Europe is rarely important and maybe never important. Maybe when it creates systematic shocks, but Germany's numbers just reflecting Brexit and, and China. It's not an independent driver of demand. What do you, how, how do you assess where we are in the cycle and what it means for stock? I think uh, the way I would say it's, it's it can stay late for long, and I think that's also maybe somewhat consensus. Um, even if you, I mean, were we in mid-cycle in January of 2006 when this part of the curve inverted the first time? You had almost two years left of an expansion. Yeah, that's right. And if someone went to cash, they would have massively not only underperformed, they would have really did a disservice to their clients. I think in some ways... Maybe people getting defensive makes sense, but you know, do you want to miss out on four years of further gains yeah. or a 10% further year this year? Are you still hey, tracking active managers at all, or yes, do you kind of abandon that? Yeah, we, we have, but it's not, it, it's just, there's something structurally wrong with active management today, which I think has to do with flows have made their job impossible, and I think. It's well, just impossible to keep up with the averages, is what you're saying, more or less because of the flows into the... Yeah, and I think the cost of management is high. So I think when interest rates are higher, active management will get a tailwind because you have to remember that they're earning money on their cash or they're going to earn money on their shorts. Um, but I think we're finding active managers responding to this to trying to be longer time horizon, more thematic, because that's where you sort of let beta work for you over time. Mm -hmm.